I started playing when I was 14. Um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, let me think. Uh, I started playing when I was 14. I got a drum kit for my 14th birthday. And I haven't stopped since. Except for that one year that I was dying. <laughs> Probably Lars from Metallica, Dave from Slayer, Igor from Sepultura. The three, three best ones, I believe. All very stretch. I play metal because it's fun and uh, metal music is my favourite music. And yeah, I don't know. I think about anything else. Cook my drum parts by paying attention to what I'm listening to at the moment and oh my god. <laughs> uh, how do I develop my drum parts? I pay attention to what I'm listening to at the moment and try to incorporate a myriad of different influences rip off drummers that are better than me. Oh, very kiss. Why do you hate Liam? Because he's... <laughs> so fucking good. in college then, not Monday now. No, it's not reading week. Alright. Reading week? Yeah. There must be a college lecture at one time now, do you want to 
Well, we have some assignments to do this week, so it's actually quite handy. Yes. Reading, don't forget to read. I've been reading. There's a bit of psychoacoustics. Did you listen to the famous man in the room one? No, which one? The man sitting in a room. lessons of a friend of my dad's, he was doing like a group lessons with a, a rake of other young kids, like uh, yeah, 10 years old, uh, my dad showed me my first thing, which is a 12 bar blues, the din, do, 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 do. that's all I played for about two years, and then I went to lessons with Kevin Stanley, so uh, Kevin Stanley put me on my right path. Then for a couple of years after that, I went to a guy called Pascal Lam, a fantastic guitar player from Dundalk, Pascal the Rascal, uh, and he showed me the rest of what I know and basically how to keep going, keep practicing, how to practice, uh, which was an eye opener for me. Like how to, 
you know, as far as I knew, it was just sit down, play over and over and over again until you're blue in the face. But, uh, yeah. bands back in the day would have to be number one Queen made me pick up the guitar in the first place. Uh, Def Leppard was a kind of, <laughs> uh, I don't know, a stab in the dark at looking at heavy music. Uh, then of course Pantera, Slayer, Metallica, Megadeth, I went down that road, real mainstream, thrash metal, Cannibal Corpse later on, um, Meshuggah then obviously, um, band I've uh, recently gotten into is a band called Necrophagist, um, just the, the technicalities of them all and the, all that kind of wizardry uh, really pricks my ears up. I'd approach writing a solo, I'd look at the chords, I'd, I'd, I'd think about what the vocals might be doing and how it, how it should fit in a song. Maybe not necessarily uh, sh trying to show off it's something I want to stay away from as well, but something that works with the song that's not the same as the other guitar is doing or what the vocals are doing, but has a a memory of it, if that makes sense. Um, but just tr I think the bottom line is keeping keeping the vibe of the song.
<laughs> I started playing guitar when I was about 17 years old and that's about in 2001 and I obviously started playing like rock stuff, ACC, local bands and you know it kind of it took off from there and um, my favorite bands back then were probably Slayer, Metallica, you know all the big fours like trash metal and stuff like that and then it kind of it evolved from there and uh, I think that a breakthrough came when I when I started listening to, to a lot of Opeth and uh, it really it really changed the way how how I approach uh, comp composing also one of my favorite bands and especially because of the kind of rhythmic stuff they do is uh, Meshuga and uh, I think they are really innovative in terms of what the, the style they created uh, and how they how they play with uh, rhythmic cells and uh, syncopations and polyrhythms and isorhythms and stuff like that and obviously one of my favorite ones nowadays is Gojira they are like so much powerful and you obviously know them usually when I write for the band I start with a simple idea probably like a guitar riff and uh, that's kind of like the, the kicking point and then I develop an idea from that riff if I have another interesting riff or section I try to meld them together in order for the song or the composition to make sense and then I just take it from there then I try to design a suitable line base that well technically I usually compose the bass lines with having the drums in mind and, uh, and then once I kind of have like a solid foundation or structure then I start adding details and uh, then I write the, the vocal lines and then finally I just compose the lyrics that would suit the rhythmic and melodic lines. to learn it all in one day and uh, fail miserably. Jimi Hendrix, Elvis Presley, Rush, Japan. Challenging, fun, enjoyable.
Uh, one more time. Usually when I write music for Svetkant, I try not to uh, catch myself into a particular genre. I just write what I think that goes in line with the band's style and that also kind of pushes the boundaries of the type of music that is being played nowadays. So basically I try to compose something that satisfies myself that would potentially satisfy other people and that would also potentially would leave a sort of imprint within uh, music. So I just try to write something that's uh, intendedly different and not just let it flow. Usually when I write something that's just in draft mode and then I just try to change it constantly until I feel that it's something that works within the genre, but that it also is a little bit different from what is already being played in the scene. Probably our new songs will develop uh, in a more cohesive way in terms that uh, I will try to incorporate uh, um, input and stuff from the band members. Up to now I have written, I'd say, all the songs and all the lyrics and I would like to try to incorporate new things from other people just to get uh, fresh sounds, fresh perspectives and uh, things that maybe myself I wouldn't compose either by coincidence or purposely. Sometimes I feel that a riff might not suit our style and I would discard it but maybe if I'm open to other people's uh, input and they come up with something they consider is worth it, then maybe I'll, I'll, I'll incorporate it and try to, to voice other, other people's opinions and not just what I think is the best for the band. That, that's way, that way um, the input of other people will be, will be appreciated and it will reflect in a more solid band music. <laughs>